I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Kevin Liu, the Head of Business Development and Growth at the Band Protocol. Kevin, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here. Hey Ashton, uh, great to meet you and thanks for having me here. I'm um, really excited to you know, participate in the show, um, get connected with yourself as well. Let's talk a bit about you know, Oracle Smart Contracts and Band Protocol, of course. Definitely, yeah, there's a lot of things to learn still about oracles specifically and smart contracts and the way that band protocol does it so if you want to just kick it off by elaborating on what is band protocol how does the platform work and how does it integrate the real world into the blockchain yeah it's a great start um just to kind of kick it off i guess um before we get into band protocol specifically it's really un important to understand that you know smart contracts aren't all that smart. Mm -hmm. um, smart contracts and blockchain applications, they have no easy access to external data and information. And this is commonly known as the Oracle problem. Um, you can imagine um, you know, smart contracts as a piece of code uh, living in its own ecosystem, you know, such as the Ethereum network, but it can't access information on other blockchains or data in the real world, such as you know, financial data. Mm -hmm. um, the key thing here, um, oracles, is that um, you know you need someone to fetch the data, bring it on chain, and essentially that's the job of band. Um, we bring external data outside of the blockchain to smart contracts in the most reliable and secure manner as possible. Mm -hmm. And this is particularly important when you think about smart contracts um, who rely on inputs such as data to deterministically dictate the behavior and logic of underlying applications, which could hold user funds. You know, mm -hmm. you can think about, um, you know, a lending application quite simply. They need price data to determine you know, how much um, do I give this user in terms of stablecoin? How much do I lend out? Mm -hmm. And how to manage the collateral that's in the system. Um, Band essentially, um, you know, the short summary is we're a cross-chain data oracle platform. So we aggregate and connect real-world data and APIs to smart contracts, allowing developers to create and their own custom decentralized oracles that essentially power uh, decentralized applications in a secure manner. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And so without these oracles, essentially, smart contracts would be super dumb. You could say that. Um, or you could say, you know, they just natively uh, operate in their own ecosystem. You know, potentially, you know, smart contract applicants don't all need data. But, you know, when you're thinking about innovation, when you're thinking about um, DeFi specifically, mm -hmm. you are going to need financial data, market data. Mm -hmm, definitely. And now you talk about financial data, and I, I understand that oracles can work in different situations as blockchain technology grows into non-financial industries as well. But of course, right now, the financial industry seems to be pretty hot um, with mm -hmm. integrating this in because the need for all of these exchanges that are popping up um, so is that where your number one target is for growth right now? Is just focusing on financial services that need reliable information? Um, it's kind of like a yes and no. Um, so our focus is to really go and support where smart contract applications go. Essentially, you know, we are the data providers um, or the middlemen to bring off-chain data to bridge it on-chain. So essentially, you know, if you think about the smart contract space right now, um, the buzz is all about decentralized finance. So that mm -hmm. is essentially where you know, our focus is right now. But mm -hmm. it's not to say that you know, this is going to be the focus in the next one year, the next two years. We're essentially here to support um, the industry as well as the space, uh, wherever it may go. Mm -hmm. That's great. And the DeFi space is really hot right now. Uh, you're right, Kevin. It d it's mm -hmm. done like a tenfold increase in, uh, in value that's been locked just throughout since before the summer. Uh, of 2020 here so it's quite an exponential growth um, do you see that as going in the right direction right now um, because you know there's always flaws when everything when something grows really quickly and you know tenfold in a few months is uh, is a large growth but um, it do you, you know in the space overall for oracles and just for DeFi is is or are, are your oracles moving into the space properly in the DeFi space and helping it grow for sure. Um, I think we're playing a key role here, um, you know, especially when it comes to uh, DeFi in itself. Um, again, you know, they rely on price oracles for lending, you need interest rate oracles for stablecoin, mm -hmm. you need to, you know, value collateral. Um, for us, it's simply really about, um, you know, 
again, supporting the space where it's needed to securely build these decentralized applications. Uh, we mm-hmm. don't control, you know, who builds what or what's going to be built, but essentially we want to make sure that, you know, this is done in the most reliable and secure manner possible. Um, on a DeFi space itself, um, yes, it's done tenfold. It's gone exponential is probably the right word, uh, maybe even an understatement. Um, but I feel like in terms of the direction that it could go, um, it's really about solving a desperate or critical issue in traditional finance today. Mm-hmm. I think, which we're still yet to see, um, you know, PayPal adopting uh, cryptocurrency as payments, also for merchants, is a great start. Mm-hmm. But um, I definitely think we have a long way to go. Yeah. Well, I, I really like that Band Protocol is cross chain, as you mentioned. And I believe you're already working with you know, multiple blockchains. Um, are you open to just working with any different blockchains that require data oracles? Or are you primarily working with, you know, in the DeFi space, it seems like Ethereum sort of is handling the bulk of all of this liquidity providing? Yeah, so for us, um, the focus is really to support um, all the leading blockchain platforms, you know, from layer one to layer two. Essentially, again, it's really all about um, going wherever smart contract developers go, going wherever smart contract uh, development goes and essentially, um, you know, whether it's on Ethereum, uh, whether it's on Binance Smart Chain, whether it's on Matic Network, um, we are working really hard to stay really close and in touch, not only with the development teams, but also the dApps and teams that are building um, the next generation of products, uh, the next generation of applications um, mm-hmm. on their space. Mm-hmm. That's great. And, and one of the other spaces I'm curious about for or- data oracles, um, because it's also been quite hot throughout 2020, is NFTs, you know, non-fungible tokens and non-fungible token marketplaces. And soon, right now, it's mainly digital assets and digital art, but mm-hmm. it will move into real world assets as well. Um, you know, is there a role, a role for data oracles in the future of NFTs as well? You might notice I'm smiling a little bit because um, <laughs> NFTs, um, yes, they have created quite a buzz. Um, it's really exciting space. It's really new, um, a lot more niche than, um, you know, uh, DeFi already is. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, you know, NFTs um, can play a really big role, especially uh, leveraging blockchain technology. Um, you know, a common one is Pokemon cards, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You can think about NFTs as, um, you know, a digital art, you know, that you solely own that, you know, you have verifiable proof on a blockchain that you own this particular, you know, PNG, this GIF. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, some people say you can just copy and paste it. But when you think about um, other applications away from, you know, just digital artwork, you can think about unlisted digital goods, um, mm-hmm. you know, more namely like uh, domain names, uh, social media accounts, um, also a big market, which is uh, in-game assets. I'm not sure if you played mm-hmm. uh, RuneScape or, you know, um, Pokemon Go. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people still trade, you know, gold pieces in RuneScape. A lot of people still trade uh, Pokemon Go. Um, you know, for example, if I want to sell you uh, my Dragonite on Pokemon Go, essentially um, you can create an NFT that gives you the ownership of my Dragonite, but oracles will be needed to verify the ownership of this mm. particular Dragonite, as well as the price data. If you were to mm-hmm. work, um, you know, if we were to work with an NFT marketplace, um, essentially we need to pull the data from Web2 markets to facilitate this transaction. And um, it's actually funny that you bring this up because um, not too long ago, we actually got connected with a team that's building exactly that, an mm-hmm. NFT marketplace for unlisted digital goods. And I think this could be the next wave of innovation of blockchain mm-hmm. technology. Still, again, very new. Yeah, that's very cool. And uh, I'm excited to be able to actually use oracles and, and buy and sell real world uh, goods when the marketplaces become really mainstream. It, it is super niche, even more niche than, than DeFi is right now. But uh, I think the potential is huge to tokenize everything from you know cars to houses and to collectibles as well. So that's really cool. So currently, you mentioned that you're partnered with a bunch of different blockchains. Um, so Band of Protocol is running smoothly. You guys are still working on development. Um, I'm guessing to mm-hmm. always continually improve and grow. You know, what does the roadmap look like for Band Protocol throughout the rest of 2020 and into 2021? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and don't want to leak too much info that I'm not supposed to, but essentially, mm-hmm. you know, on the uh, integration side, we're going to be channeling, channeling a lot of our efforts 
to, again, support um, even more layer ones, layer two blockchain platforms. And naturally, this trickles down into supporting the developers that are building um, applications on such platforms, you know, mm -hmm. ensuring that, you know, they have access to the right uh, data feeds, you know, uh, DeFi, again, for price feeds, um, we're seeing a lot more insurance products pop up, um, mm -hmm. you know, that need, you know, weather data, uh, flight mm -hmm. data, um, you know, essentially for, let's say, you know, a crop insurance product. Um, for me, it's really all about making sure that these teams are building, again, um, something that's safe and reliable for the end users. Um, we're probably still f very far away from, you know, a perfect uh, DeFi application. But, you know, mm -hmm. again, again, we're in a stage of experimentation, constant iteration. And for me um, and Band Protocol, as an Oracle who, again, is reliable to, responsible to provide this critical infrastructure, uh, we want to stay at the forefront of this technology. Um, but on the technical side, the roadmap for the next six months is um, pretty exciting to say the least. Essentially, a um, bit of context here, um, just recently on October 14, we upgraded our mainnet uh, to phase one, which essentially allows all 68 of our validator nodes to support Oracle functionality and earn a portion of the data request fees. Um, trickling into the next six months, um, our next milestone, uh, phase two, is to support um, premium and payable data sources natively on Bandchain to allow them to automatically collect revenue to the data source owners. So for context, um, right now, we or our integration partners uh, work with the data providers themselves uh, manually uh, to pay uh, for access of the, to these feeds. Uh, mm -hmm. This could be you know, quite tedious for the data source owner as well as the developer. So we're really excited to ship this solution. Essentially, uh, the most interesting thing upon the completion of phase two is that DAP developers will now be able to utilize most of the data available on the open internet. Hmm. Wow, that sounds big. Well, that's exciting. Um, so we're running out of time, but uh, I'm curious, are you mainly looking for strategic partners and other blockchain networks, or are you also just looking for community members to join and help out with the protocol right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like kind of, uh, I guess you can break it down to those two. Um, so strategic partners, um, we can kind of say our focus is, again, um, both these blockchain projects as well as blockchain platforms. Um, we're constantly on the lookout to, you know, find and help um, the teams that, you know, need off-chain information, um, whether it's, you know, pricing data, bidding data. Um, we're going to see a lot more, you know, essentially oracles created for different applications, you know, bespoke applications, you know, ones in the supply chain. Um, mm -hmm. We're bouncing this idea around with partner vows, essentially, you know, if you could use, um, say, you know, the FedEx API or some supply chain API to verify um, a particular location of a shipment. Um, I think, you know, for us, it's going to be about um, not only finding these strategic partners, but also letting the community know that, you know, if there is, you know, something that they want to build, if there is a creative idea that they have in mind, um, it could potentially be unlocked through oracles um, and mm -hmm. blockchain technology. Um, so to answer your question quite directly, um, yes, we're always on the lookout for more strategic partners. Um, although, you know, for us, I think it's quite safe to say that um, a lot of the partners today, they already are working on, you know, quite creative and innovative ideas. Um, I can try not to say too much, but I'm really excited to, you know, meet new people. Um, there's constant hackathons going on. There's one right now um, hosted by the Avalanche team called Money Dance. And we're really excited to see um, what comes out of these hackathons. I think it's a really critical uh, event um, that, you know, really bootstraps innovation of the ecosystem. Very cool, Kevin. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to the supply chain industry as well because it's just so big. And if you can get one of those major corporate partners, then uh, that, that will be life changing for the industry and, and for everybody that's uh, you know doing commerce around the world. So very exciting. Uh, I will leave the link to Band Protocol, uh, your website and your community links in the description box below. Uh, all the best with Band Protocol moving forward and let's follow up in the near future. Awesome. Sounds perfect. Um, thanks for having me, Ashton. You're welcome.